Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, we're so happy to bring you our guest, Charlie Winninger, and we'll be talking about the risks and benefits of MDMA across the adult lifestyle. Charles is the author of Listening to Ecstasy, The Transformative Power of MDMA. DMA, and he is a th- psychotherapist in private practice and licensed as a psychoanalyst as well as a mental health counselor. He specializes in relationships and communication skills and has been treating couples and individuals in his Manhattan and Brooklyn office for over 30 years. He's been featured in the New York Times and Newsday and has been referred to as the Love Doctor. For the past 20 years, Charlie has been a member of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, which funds research into the use of MDMA for treating PTSD, social anxiety, and other ailments. He and his wife, Shelley, have been instrumental in building the local MAPS community in New York since 2004. He lectures on psychedelics across the lifespan and related topics. And his website is charliewinninger.com. And that's charlie, C-H-A-R-L-E-Y, Winninger, W-I-N-I-N-G-E-R.com. And you can always visit our archive and you'll have a click link right to Charles's website. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ellen. It's great to be here. So although many people may find this a new topic for them, um, I do a lot of lecturing on such things as the pineal gland and its relationship to both our spiritual and physical lives and have, have uh, spoken quite about a bit about these kinds of things, such as with um, Rick Strassman, who's a medical doctor who wrote DMT, the spirit molecule. Mm-hmm. So a lot of this is actually quite well researched but let's go back in time charlie what got you involved with looking at this aspect of life well i've always been an explorer uh and uh, i've been uh, not only a psychotherapist but i've been put myself through all kinds of therapy in my life uh, and uh, at my major part of my growth has always been through uh uh, through my own psychotherapy, and um, I discovered psychedelics as uh, a hippie back in the day, like a lot of boomers, and uh, found out that although there were risks involved, it was quite fascinating, and that was there was a lot to learn. It was as if each psychedelic substance, whether it be LSD or magic mushrooms or or, or what have you. And later on, I discovered MDMA. Uh, had, each one had its own curriculum, its own courses of study uh, to learn in. And um, uh, so I've, I've always used them as part of my growth. Well, certainly when we look back in history, really these kinds of things that transform our consciousness and bring forth what can also be uh, explored as a spiritual dimension, yet many people find that they have the same kind of revelations. And this is throughout history. This is not a new phenomena. That's right. That's right. Um, And people have... and, and. Individuals and tribes um, have been using mind-altering substances for thousands of years for healing, uh, for divination, uh, and uh, learning about nature and developing their relationship with uh, the greater cosmos. 
That's so true and so well documented, both scientifically, historically, anthropologically. Um, but why do you think, as we moved closer in to modern times, many of these substances are now illegal? Well, for two reasons. Um, it's a good question. Uh, they are illegal because some people abuse them. Um, and uh, those stories of abuse get uh, put in the newspapers. Uh, the newspapers are always, and, and the media is always hungry for another scare the pants off the parents story. Uh, and so uh, they become sensationalized. And the few people who abuse them, uh, uh, they, that becomes the, uh, the image of the drug. And then the politicians come and make it illegal. But psychedelics were also made illegal because... I, I say, um, and I suspect, and a lot of people suspect, because they open the mind and are a threat to the status quo and to the powers that be. And the status quo really understands this, and so they wanted and needed to suppress it. And uh, the 60s were a good example of that, because people would take LSD, for example, and look at the Vietnam War and, and say, this is the most absurd thing in the world. Or look at the power structure that put us in the Vietnam War and, and other problems like the climate change. Climate change. Uh, and, and said, like, this is all ridiculous. We need a whole other new way of looking at everything. And that threatened the status quo. Well, it's interesting to look at. And of course, what you hear a lot about are horror stories, although... Even with something like LSD, for instance, which is widely known by many people, there's really no physical phenomena linked to any danger with using it. Although there are certainly stories of people having psychiatric breakdowns. Yes, because at the time we didn't know about the importance of set and setting mindset and your environment. Uh, when you did a substance like LSD or a substance like MDMA, which is what my book, Listening to Ecstasy, is about. Uh, it's all about MDMA and how it can transform your life and help you with life transitions uh, and help you uh, navigate middle, middle age and old age. Well, let's talk more about that because... What does MDMA stand for? It's methylene dioxymethamphetamine. Uh, and, it's, uh, uh, it, and it's adulterated form. You've heard it called ecstasy or molly. But my book and my experimentation is only with pure MDMA. And it was uh, used before it became illegal in 1985 because people were abusing it. Uh, it, uh, it was used in psychotherapeutic circles to help people deal with trauma and also given to couples uh, because it helped couples uh, uh, reunite, the couples who have been in trouble and needed couples therapy. And up to now, uh, it is uh, still used uh, in underground therapy, uh, but hopefully that will become above ground uh, soon. So when you mean under, what you, when you say underground therapy, what does that mean? That means uh, trained therapists who are uh, doing this, g giving MDMA to people and and sitting for them, guiding them through an MDMA session. It's underground because it's not illegal, but it is um, in in these cases um, extraordinarily beneficial to the people who who avail themselves of it. And how did you begin your study with using these, this particular substance? Well, um, I, I started uh, uh, experimenting with MDMA with my wife, uh, my second wife, Shelly, uh, back in the early 2000s. And we found that it was, uh, it, it was a revelation to her and to us. Um, she had come out of a... Uh, uh, pretty repressive marriage uh, to her first husband and she wanted to spread her wings and she realized that this was actually 
it, it was a maligned sus- substance, but it was actually a sheep in wolf's clothing. It was actually very gentle, uh, very user friendly, and uh, it taught us that play, fun, joy can be transformational experiences, uh, and it helped bond us as a couple. So, you know, I just want to say here that, of course, you're listening to Herbally Yours, um, at the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. And we are discussing the book, Listening to Ecstasy, The Transformative Power of MDMA, with author Charlie Winninger. And I would just like to say, since we actually are talking about a substance that is illegal, that um, our station here, WHPC, does not condone um, its use or recommend its use. We're just giving you information about what's going on in, you know, some underground circles. Um, and certainly, uh, I'm glad you Charlie, said that. yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. And, and I say it too. I don't recommend it. Uh, my book is basically just saying what it's done for me, what it's done for my wife, what it's done for our relationship. Uh, how it's made me a better psychotherapist. I'm not saying it's going to do this for anyone else. I can't recommend that anyone do it because it's illegal. And uh, there are risks involved. And I have the whole chapter in my book about the risks. It's a guide. The chapter is a guide to safe use uh, and how to avoid the risks and minimize the risks and maximize the benefits. Um, so uh, if we, I also know that I can't stop anyone from using MDMA. I don't recommend it, but I can't stop you from using it. If you're going to use it, you had better understand uh, the risks and, and how to minimize them and how to make the most out of the experience. And you have a blog about it also, some interesting blogs, mm-hmm. on psychology today. Uh, yes, on psychology today, uh, I do. I have, uh, I have a blog there going on for a long time. So that's, you know, interesting that, that they're allowing you to share this. So let's go to, you know, just as a disclaimer, let's talk a little bit about what you brought up in terms of your book, the many, the many uh, lessons that are in your book. So we'll talk about some of the excellent ones and finding joy, but let's talk about possible adverse effects and side effects since you do share a chapter in your book about that. Sure. Um, There are the most uh, uh, well-known bad uh, side effect is what's known as the Tuesday blues. That's several days after you do MDMA, your mood can take a dive because what MDMA does is flood your system with your own serotonin and oxytocin. And if you don't replenish that, if you don't drink enough water during the experience, if you don't sleep it off that night, and also take uh, an over-the-counter supplement, which is cheap and and legal to obtain in any CVS, called 5-HTP, if you don't follow those protocols... Uh, you can have you can uh, have a dip in mood for several days, um, but there are other risks because this 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 compound is not for everyone. Uh, people who suffer from epilepsy should not do it. People who have a history of schizophrenia should not do it. Uh, people who have a history of paranoia should not do it. Um, if you are bipolar or have a lot of bipolar in your family, you should probably stay away from it. Um, so, so there are people who should not do this. And if you have a heart condition, you should not do it. Right. So those are some warnings, That's certainly. Right. So it's not about, let's say, just using it in a party sense to get high, but more in a therapeutic sense. So yes. is that therapeutic, true? But, uh, therapeutic, yes. Um, but uh, we also use it recreationally, or the better word I use is celebrationally because uh, Shelley and I have found it's really the icing on our cake. We have a good marriage to begin with. Uh, this gives us a whole other level of, of joy and fun. And uh, the book is also the story, Ellen, of how she and I, when we first started experimenting with MDMA, entered a forbidden world 
of drug users, people who use MDMA, and found that world to be enchanted with the most wonderful, open-hearted, open-minded, embracing people you'd ever want to meet. So it's really helped our expand our lives at a time in our lives. I mean, I'm 71 years old. Uh, Shelly's just a couple of years younger than me. A time in our lives when, you know, often people, when they get old, they, they, their worlds shrink. Our world has expanded um, or their, their, their minds, they get more rigidified, but we have learned to, uh, to love and, and learn new things as we get older. And I definitely, well, from my point of view, my family lives very, very, very long. And, uh, you know, like my mom, who's 92, mm. has been discovering Zoom. Mm-hmm. And she's so excited about a whole new way to visit with her, you know, friends and family, attend dance parties, go to exercise classes. And, you know, we don't really find that there is any end to learning and living. And I think that is a real tool to yeah. staying vibrant and healthy as we age is, you know, that that spir- that sort of spiritual inspiration that there's lots of new things around all the time. All the time. That's right. And so this was one that you began to explore. That's so, right. So what exactly happens on a physiological level? Well, as I said, MDMA floods the system with your own, it releases, helps you release your own serotonin and oxytocin. Um, so that gives, that results in a feeling of immense well-being. Uh, there's no hallucinations. You're completely in control. It's very user-friendly. Uh, you could be out and about and think, people will just think you're having a nice day. Uh, it gives you a, a feeling of immense well-being and also safety. So what about the focus that you have in your book overall on the importance of fun, play, and joy? Well, yes. uh, We found that to be uh, transformative experiences because it shows us, uh, I've learned that one can open up their lives at any time in their lives. Uh, and uh, I mean, I I didn't decide to become a psychotherapist till I turned forty, which was thirty years ago. Well, that's inspirational. So, did you have another career before that? Yes, uh, I was doing everything. I mean, I was a cab driver in my life. I was a salesperson, an executive recruiter, a writer, an editor. I'd done all kinds of things, um, but I didn't really find my calling until age forty. And then you went back to school. And I went back to school. And I didn't find the love of my life, Shelley, until age 51, my second wife. So we found it's, it's really never too late to discover uh, a new land, a, a new way to live, uh, and open up one's life to friendship and fun and, and freedom. Um, what would you explain in terms of the additional pressure on people to feel, you know, freedom and love and all those things with our current uh, lifestyle restrictions going on due to COVID? Good question. Um, uh, We have found that MDMA is, uh, and again, I'm just speaking for us, to be a, a terrific way to travel at home. It's like the world's best staycation. Um, uh, we we do it with each other. Uh, we've done it several times in the past year during the during the crisis during quarantine, especially here in Brooklyn, uh, the big quarantine going on, and um, we just found it to be a, a day of joy and connecting with each other on a very deep spiritual, profound level. Uh, opening our hearts to each other, listening to wonderful music together doing a little dancing, uh, and, uh, um, and, and some lovemaking as well, <laughs> because it can be, uh, it's, it's just such a uh, essential experience with MDMA. Now, in terms of your website, therelationship.com, you go into better living through better relationships. Mm-hmm. And um, what do you, what's that focus for you about? 
So actually, uh, minor correction, it's called therelationshop.com. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> um, and um, it's about my work as a psychotherapist uh, with individuals and couples the past 30 years. And um, I've been, uh, I say, MD, I don't do, um, I should say right now, uh, I, I do only sober uh, 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 when I pr- I'm only sober when I practice, and the people in my uh, office are sober. I don't do guided uh, experiences. I don't use MDMA in my practice, but I do help couples reunite, uh, get back to the love that they once knew that got them together in the first place. Uh, and uh, uh, MDMA has helped me uh, get in touch with the power of empathy. Uh, matter of fact, the MDMA before it, before it was called ecstasy, it was called empathy. Um, back in California in the early days uh, when people were doing therapy with it, um, and it's helped develop my own power of empathy and to to help others get in touch with their uh, ability to empathize and stand in their partner's shoes in a sober way, uh, stand in their partner's shoes and uh, and and understand what it's like going through what their partner is going through and feeling what their partner is feeling. And that can be very transformative when it comes to couples work. And, and I find that uh, a lot of people are having an additional challenge these days because of the political milieu. And there's oftentimes where two people in the relationship actually have opposite worldviews. And in the past, you know, you could just, oh, well, so what? We'll just ignore that. But now it's so in your face that it's causing a vast amount of conflicts. Yes, it is. And that's one reason I call MDMA the medicine of the moment, because it helps open the heart and realize that our differences, whether it's between husband and wife or two friends or you and a family member, political differences uh, that you might have uh, with people are not as important as what we have in common as human beings or as Americans. Uh, We have more in common than we have differences and what we have in common is more important than our differences. And MDMA helps us understand that we're really all made of the same stuff. We really all have the same problems, ultimately, uh, and we really need each other whether we want to to admit that or not. Yeah, and certainly that's that's a a much bigger issue, it seems, right now. Yes. um, Then it had, well, maybe other times in the past as well, but not so much in recent history. Well, right now we have such alienation in the society and loneliness. It's an epidemic of loneliness, uh, and and isolation, and when people are isolated, they get sucked into the internet, and either going to the to the left or the right, or conspiracy theories, or um, all sorts of, or, or or get into addictions like gambling online. Um, it keeps them all isolated. Uh, that's why I like to call MDMA the uh, chemical of connection, because it helps connect us not only with ourselves but each other. MDMA encourages us, urges us to lean into, lean out of yourself into another person. Um, So that's why you don't want to do MDMA alone. You want to do it with somebody who's a friend, uh, who's a a, a partner, uh, and uh, helps you connect and understand how beautiful it can be to connect with somebody. Well, you have been featured in both the New York Times and Newsday as the love doctor. How did you get that moniker? Well, I, uh, uh, in, in my earlier days, um, I was uh, building my practice by coaching singles on finding true love. And I still uh, coach singles. Uh, and so... Um, uh, I, a newspaper reporter from Newsday came and, and uh, went, to, went to one of my lectures and uh, wrote an article calling me the love doctor and the New York Times has quoted that article. And, um, and so, uh, but I, I, I do love getting people together and, and, and uh, teaching them that, that you can find true love at any age. Uh, and it's, there's always 
uh, somebody, an old phrase is there's a cover for every pot. Um, there's, there's, a, there's somebody out there for you. Uh, and um, they're looking for you. And uh, with the right skills, you will find them. Right. Okay. And I guess it's a matter of also having that as a priority, because I would say a lot of people are perfectly happy being single. And it's perfectly a, a valid choice being single, as long as you don't isolate yourself, uh, because that can be detrimental to your mental and physical well-being. So there's um, the love doctor, kind of like Dr. Ruth. Right, mm-hmm. And Dr. Ruth is also an elder, and yet she's very active in that field yes. of, you know, both sexuality and connecting with others. Yes, a wonderful inspiration she is. I know. I interviewed her um, one time on a television show I was doing, and she's the, oh, I'm 411, and She's the only person ever. She made me take my shoes off. I am not kidding. I had little teeny heels on, and she wouldn't, you know, talk to me. I was, we were standing next to each other. She said, take your shoes off, you know, because you don't see your feet in an interview. I can't, couldn't believe it. What a great feeling. I, I never yeah. felt that before. Yeah. And she's quite, quite a spirited being. Yes, she um, is. Yeah. As you are as well. So, you you know, thank you so much for sharing all that information with us. Um, Let's talk about how people can find you if they wanted to continue the discussion. Well, um, they can go to charliewininger.com or uh, even better, they could go to Amazon, uh, type in listening to ecstasy. And uh, whether they buy the book or not, they, you, you can learn all about the book uh, on that page on Amazon, Listening to Ecstasy. Um, and uh, you can contact me through there or, uh, like I said earlier, charliewininger.com. That's Charlie with an E-Y and uh, Winninger, W-I-N-I-N-G-E-R.com. Okay, well, I want to thank you so much for being our guest today and for, you know, all of your intense work in the field over many, many decades. So thank you so much for being our guest. And we were talking today with Charlie Winninger, the author of Listening to Ecstasy, The Transformative Power of MDMA. And And thank you so much, Ellen, for having me on and for doing the service that you do. Well, thank you. And listeners, thank you so much for tuning in once again to Herbal Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For further information, you can email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai, at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy.